How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lane Wolf, and uh, today I'm going to go and do this one, uh, Block Beta. So it's the second one in this, like, restoring this massive plant. Uh, got these, got the big boys out for this one, got the Zix, the Clob, and the uh, the Dolphin. Got three goddamn horses. Uh, I've, well, originally I was planning on using all three eight-slot trailers. I end up using a, a couple of four-slots on the Zix. But yeah, for the first bit of the mission I've got to do, I'm going to take the Clob and the Dolphin down to that uh, place, grab... Uh, what was it like four lots of small pipes and two metal beams I only need two small pipes but then one of the trucks the Zix uh, sorry the club I'm gonna bring down to there swap the small pipes for medium pipes grab four cement meet the dolphin back there and drop all that off there so that'd be like a big chunk of the mission in itself so yeah that's the route I'm gonna kind of do for the start and then uh, we'll send out the Zix a little bit later and you can see now, as soon as I start the mission, it was a it was a sign of things to come. It's funnily enough, like as far as bugs and all the rest of it go, I've not really been that trolled by anything in the last couple of days. Like sort of out of sight, out of mind. I can't really remember anything going on in the videos. It wouldn't winch, so I could do a road train. So I now stuck a I got into the dolphin, stuck a winch to the uh, collab, just to see like well, it's definitely attaching a winch. I have to switch to this and then to that to go down the chain. But my club started driving slowly forward by itself, and then because the way cargo packs or whatever, it started floating along by itself, and then the load fell off. So quit and reloaded already, like literally barely got out of the yard. Um, yeah, it still wouldn't let me do a road train and stick a winch on the dolphin behind me. It's basically just because both of them are going to the same warehouse, so even if it was going to be like, I don't, I didn't need to road train it everywhere, but it just would have been handy to just get little bits of the journey done like in one and as far as like the club it's in the advanced special setup anyway with the gearboxes so it's gonna get into like fifth gear and all that and uh, yeah the towing the dolphin behind it might slow it down by a few mile an hour but not a lot like the dolphin's got the f sort of higher ratio gearbox so yeah, overall it wouldn't make much difference to the speed, but like I said, it just wasn't letting me, as usual. So I suppose that's bug number two <laughs> before I've even got out of the yard. And uh, yeah, I wanted to bring the club out for this, see how that does. I still do like this truck, it's been a pretty pretty solid truck since the beginning. When it first came out, I tried it and it caught its nose on everything far too much. Uh, I think everybody that had tried it at that point kind of thought the same and just sold it back or whatever. Uh, they patched that. Around the same time, I think they helped Bruce's chin not catch quite as much. And ever since then, it's been pretty solid. But then in phase two, I believe, when they added the raised suspension for the club, that's when it really made it like... Because the big skid plate in the middle, like, there's kind of an average amount you sink into terrain on this game. It's all like the bit I'm driving on the snow now and normal mud and all the rest of it. Like, you just sink a certain amount all the time. And when you sink that amount... The big skid plate thing on the front of the club would be scraping along the floor then already. Whereas now, with the suspension raised, like obviously if you wade in into the deeper stuff, it'll start scraping the skid plate. But that's like yeah, pretty much everything is digging in by them with its diffs or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's just that amount it's raised. Like gives it more suspension travel to easy, like easier climb over rocks and everything. Easier is a terrible sentence. <laughs> To more easily climb over rocks. All these English lessons <laughs> wasted. And cutting down there as well, quite a lot of trucks want to tip. That's one nice thing as well with a club, is it's uh, bloody good for not tipping. Out of the two, this one and the long nose club, the long nose is nigh on impossible to tip, but this one is bloody good. It's probably got to be like top five vehicles in the game for not tipping. Maybe even top three. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is the main thing I just don't like about the 8 slot. It's just the maps really aren't even remotely designed <laughs> for an 8 slot. None of the corners you go around. And to be fair, yeah, I could have gone a bit wider there. Obviously, I've got this trailer in the way, so that doesn't help. It would have been nice to sort of enter the, uh, the yard from the right hand side, I suppose. But yeah, they're just. They're annoying, but they can hold eight slots of cargo, and uh, I speak from experience that two four-slot ramp flatbeds 
ain't exactly a nice time. See, this is the other issue, though. Is like even this yard, and to be fair, it's a pretty big yard. I'm having to do all this because I just know that turning the trailer around at this point, it's like, is it even gonna fit? <laughs> That's what she said. Um, yeah, like I pretty much have to go to each end. Uh, I just quickly moved that other truck out of the way. The load finally fallen off. Obviously, between like loading the game up and that, it was already just laying on the floor. Then, so I uh, recovered the loaf, moved the zix out of the way. He held on though for a good few weeks. I think that was on one of the live streams. So he probably held on for a good month or more. Put that my horse of a vehicle. Um, yeah, so grab two small pipes on this because I'm going to take this down to the corner. And like I said, in the last mission, I took six lots of metal rolls to the medium pipe factory. I used two of them, so there's four left, so I can build two more medium pipes. Um, so I can trade those medium pipes and build two. Uh, sorry, small, build to medium. And then I'm also going to grab four cement. Uh, yeah, this is a dolphin as well. Like, I edited that bit out because, like I said, just imagine I was road training it down there. It just wouldn't let me. Uh, yeah, the dolphin's got two small pipes, which I actually need to deliver, and two metal beams, which I also need to deliver. Uh, it wouldn't let me road train again, which is a bit of a pain in the ass because, to be fair, this section is like sort of fairly just long, straight section that it wouldn't be too much of an issue. Plus, it was two 8-slot trailers. I really don't use 8-slots that often because I don't like them. So, on the rare occasion I do, you know, like a 16-slot road train would have been pretty nice to do. But the game was having none of it. See, again, it's places like this, though, with a club. It would have been, like, sat deep enough that it'd just be scraping its belly along the whole way. Whereas uh, now, it's motoring along it feels pretty good these days. Especially like since the sort of gearbox nerf and all the rest of it. I don't think this one feels it that bad. It might be a combination of like the advanced special gearbox and the KZ GT engine are a very nice combination in just about every vehicle in the game. But it's also very weighty so a bit like the P16 it plants itself very well into the ground. And uh, yeah, going through there, it certainly didn't feel like it was getting stuck or anything. I think at some point it was going to try and make me stall in high range, but that's fair enough. There's kind of like, the mechanics of the game just don't really like high range in that kind of terrain, which, again, that's cool. I'll try and milk it for as long as I can, but... Uh, yeah, drop it in high low. That's one nice thing with the advanced special. At least you get the, uh, the three low ranges, which, again, I'd like in the high range, but I just... It's not worth sacrificing that high range gear to have the off-road gearbox and then have the three low ranges. For me anyway, obviously for other people that would be the opposite. And even now this is a uh, icy hill. I don't know though if this icy hill is quite steep enough. I think it's about on the limit. Because there's a few various things I've drove up there that haven't got changed. You see, even bumping over stuff there, because each individual wheel can lift up and bounce over the rock, it's a shame I didn't have the camera on that angle, but normally you would have seen the actual truck itself and then the loaf on top shaking around like a lunatic, because there wasn't enough travel, so the whole truck had to bump over a rock, but now, with most things, it just, yeah, like, they all individually walk over it and the whole vehicle itself isn't going crazy. You can see though, while I was trying to do a road train thing again with the dolphin, it's made my loaf slide back on the roof. And uh, because he's a goddamn professional, he's hanging on for dear life by like one little <laughs> like wooden chock under the wheel. He's kind of still sat on the roof, but yeah. It'd be nice if they uh, fix it, but I certainly wouldn't be holding my breath for it. There's other more important bugs that they haven't fixed either. And again, I would have liked to, uh, if I was road training the Dolphin by now, I would now cut it loose and just kind of wait there. And the reason why I, w I was going to do them both together is because that I just turned off to the right, but if I carried on straight ahead, which I'll have to a little bit later, uh, that is a steep icy hill that does require chained pretty much to get up there. So uh, at that point, like, well, I've got to go off and do this mission with the Zix. But then when I get back, I could have had the Dolphin as, like, the lead road train. 
and then yeah, tow the uh, Kolob up that hill basically. That was my plan. Around now I think it was by the way, the cat turned up so I'd jump around on me so I wasn't really looking at what was going on. But again though, this thing motored through there in high, it's, sadly it was about now that it died on me. But yeah, um, that is a pretty boggy trollish section and I have got an 8 slot that's loaded up and all the rest of it. Or half loaded I suppose at the minute. And uh, yeah, this thing though, ploughed through there, pretty issue free. And uh, it's not quite as quick, well, in theory, as the Zix, because I believe this has got a few inches smaller tyres. The 61s on the Zix, I can't remember what they are on this, maybe 58s or something? Um, but yeah, I don't know, with the Zix, it's, it feels like, I've sort of said gutless recently, but yeah, almost like I've said with that slippy clutch feeling as well, like you can hear the engine going, but there's just not the power there, so... I'd say this thing has more chance of, like, reaching its full potential in any given gear. That's what it certainly feels like. And especially when you tow in heavy loads and stuff, that's where the zi uh, this collab, sorry, is. Always been good at that, that's why I do crack this thing out for the big jobs. You can see there a minute ago as well, I was skidding around, that's like, without the chain on those roads. It just looks like bad driving, <laughs> essentially, but... You're basically just permanently corrective steering, your truck's kind of fishtailing and squiggling all around. Especially when you're pulling a trailer, because it's kind of like slipping around trying to fight it. But again, going through here though, I mean, it's slower, relatively speaking. I, I went through here, I, think, I don't know, in the last mission or whatever, with a dolphin in high range gear. But this is in high range, right? It's, theoretically stallable, so, but it's not, it's managing to plough its way through it. And then coming up somewhere around now, I think it was when, yeah, the cat sort of jumped on my chest, I couldn't see what was going on, I ended up crashing into one of these telegraph poles. It's got to be this one, I reckon. Yep. <laughs> he picks his moments. Ooh, we're back. Probably have to bribe him with something. <laughs> So this is the other thing though, we're like, well, it'll be coming up in a minute. Um, with this trailer that's massive, like these yards that I'm about to have to go into, they're even, well, compared to that yard where I just grabbed these small pipes from, that was like a pleasure <laughs> by comparison these yards are. If I only had to go into the one on the right to grab the cement, it wouldn't be too bad, it's still a bit awkward, but um, yeah, when I go down to this crossroad bit, I've got to go left and build the medium pipes first and as you'll see they're just there's no way like you can really turn the trail around well realistically obviously I'm just gonna kind of drop the hammer and ram it through there <laughs> hope for the best but in real life that wouldn't be so much of an option so I was trying to take a wider approach to this because I was planning on reversing the trailer in sort of, well, now to the right of the back of my trailer. And I thought, by the way, I was already building um, medium pipes. I believe I need one more for the block. What's the last mission? Gamma or something, whatever the next mission is in these. I already, by the way, I just edited out about two minutes of me trying to get out of uh, there. And the trailer just get, kept getting hooked, that's why I reversed back round, went a bit wider, rammed that ramped flatbed out of the way, kind of just drove flat out of it. Basically hoping what had happened would happen, like it just made the trailer sort of jump round the corner, because, again, a massive trailer normally in real life as well, a lot of them have steering on the trailer, so at least you can kind of get the trailer going wider on the approach or whatever, but yeah, this thing, there's just, there's no way to move the back left or right and when there's a tight yard like that I can't reverse and drive around and yeah just can't do a lot. Uh, just grabbed a bit of fuel from my free range trailer, got four cement and I'm gonna edit out this little bit but it's just 
a slow pain in the ass driving out of there. Nothing crazy, not difficult. Just keep getting hooked on the inside of that wall. So every time you sort of ram into it, it kind of bounces your trailer around a little bit and then reverse and ram into it again and eventually it just scoots your trailer over. But like I said, in real life, that's not, not going to go down too well. I'm not saying don't, <laughs> but... Not sure how long you'd have a job if you did. See, and the worst thing is as well, like, well, not the worst, but those posts, all these telegraph poles, they've got like a little concrete post attached to them that's also like planted in the ground, which, I don't know, in England we just hammer the actual telegraph pole far enough into the ground that they don't need a little support post next to it. But it's those support posts that you catch the trailer on all the time, it's not the actual post itself. Uh, I just did a quick edit there because it's all that long, it's just a long straight muddy section. This thing drove through it in high range like it did on the way. Um, yeah, it just to save a few minutes because as you can see the video is, well at the minute, is practically uh, 58 minutes long. And I, th I think it was just over 60 if I didn't edit that but regardless, yeah, it was like I've just gone down the same way minutes ago so... There's no point in showing too much of the same footage, especially if not lots going on, like this little section for example though. Seeing how well this thing can handle its way back through here, now it's got a fully loaded trailer as well. The loop's still hanging on, goddamn horse. To be fair, this uh, thing is pretty good on fuel. I did refill my tank back there, so... But I can't uh, it might have been about half empty, but still, it's not bad on fuel. At least it's got a pretty decent sized tank. See, and I think back before the uh, like the suspension they added, I would get fully stuck there. And I mean, it's close here, but essentially my wheels are just doing the equivalent of like tiptoeing compared to how they used to. And then when I'm beached on that rock, still got just enough reach to the ground and like to be able to plant enough grip and uh, get back out of there. I mean, to be fair, the, Z the new Zix is a contender in some ways, but a lot of like the best trucks in the game are still the original trucks we got, so for those of you that haven't got the season pass, you don't want to get it or whatever, it's, um, yeah. Like I said, the Zix, there's definitely an argument to be made. I still don't think it's outright the best vehicle in the game. There's a few things wrong with it, I think, but... It's definitely, in certain situations, it's one of the best, without a doubt. But yeah, everything else is kind of meh. Like I said, stuff like this I use, the P16, um, the Dolphin, the Tager I'm sure is still not bad. It's not what it used to be, but it's still decent, comparatively speaking. The Voron Grad, that's always been pretty decent. Oddly got a new engine for no apparent reason. Not sure what happened there, it wasn't an edit, but was it just me or did like the rocks look like they just blinked out of existence or something there? And um, basically this is the hill where like I said I would have liked to have used the dolphin to tow me up here. Um I know what you can sort of see it happening now. If I go on the road, I'll just wheel spin. I won't be able to climb up the hill. But I was trying to use the bank at the edge, which I did not with the P16 the other day. But I got the P16 to about here. And because it didn't have front wheel drive, I just couldn't climb the front wheels over these rocks. And that's why my loaf ended up towing it um, the rest of the way up the hill. But as this has got like a bit of oomph to actually climb over the rocks... Between that and sticking a winch kind of from the middle of the truck to that lamppost, just to kind of get me over them. And then I can kind of just get yeah, one set of wheels back in the snowbank, and uh, yeah, we're good to go. Nice little view there. I forgot to mention as well, but right at the beginning of the video, as I come out of the yard, and you kind of there's a really severe dip and then a hill you go back up. Like it's all, There's like a T-junction there. But as the collab went back up the hill, like the collab weighs so much that the trailer was just sticking in the air. 
Well, maybe it was when I went down the hill. It was just as I come out the yard, anyway, right at the beginning of the video. Um, yeah, the club weighs so much that the eight-slot trailer, like, it just lifted the eight-slot fully in the air, and that was it. Whereas other trucks like this, it's not. It wouldn't be as clear cut. Like, there's a chance the uh, trailer would be lifting this to some degree. Again, I'm going to edit a couple of bits of this, but I was just wanted to sort of show you, like, even with a fully loaded eight-slot trailer, this thing's ploughing there uh, through there in auto, and is it in first gear? But funnily enough, and I found this quite odd because obviously normally this thing tries to jump into second gear all the time when you're going up a hill. But going along flat ground here, it's just staying nicely, high revs in first gear, where it's like they've programmed the terrain, um, I was saying it sort of yesterday I think, where like it won't let you go above first gear. And it's funny it actually worked to my benefit there, because yeah I was just nicely in like the high revs in first gear, and it ploughed through there pretty good. And then now, sorry, it's just um, if you look at the fuel, like I was using say 20 odd litres going through that mud, but as I go down this hill now, I'm in high gear, you'll suddenly see the fuel drop to like 4 litres a minute now, and it in this particular map it's only while I'm rolling down that hill and then I start bumping over a load of stuff and it jumps back up, but that's just what I was saying as well with the Dolphin, is like on various maps there is sometimes like a nice free flowing road, and once you're up to speed in the high range in the Dolphin, yeah, if your fuel usage now plummets to, you know, four to six litres a minute and you're going this fast, you can cover a lot of ground for not a lot of fuel usage. But then now, I can't quite see it because it shrinks the screen, but I assume I'm up in the 20s again because I'm ploughing up this hill. But this is the hill I just went up in the uh, collab, but obviously without the chain, I had to crawl along the edge and winch and all sorts. This thing in high gear with an eight slot and all the rest of it ploughed up there, so... Like I said, the Dolphin, to me, is still one of the best vehicles in the game, without doubt. Like, I would say, um, I don't know, I'd make an argument it is the best vehicle in the game, except, like, certainly the fuel, but there's always ways around the fuel. Like, I'd rather a truck be good, but it's balanced via a small fuel tank, than a truck be crap, but it's got loads of fuel. Like, it doesn't really matter, because I'm, I'm never going to drive it long enough to need that much fuel. That's why I was kind of hoping when they released the Bandit that that was going to be pretty good because it was a good sign when it had a 150 litre fuel tank. It was like, it's probably pretty good if they had to balance it that severely with the fuel, but yeah. I mean, it's not a terrible vehicle, it's just... It tips a little bit easier. And once it tips, it's a pain in the ass to flip back to its wheels. And, uh, yeah, overall, I mean, it's got the custom muds on it, which I like the look of and all the rest of it. They help with tipping, but they're just not that good. And then I'm sure on the Bandit as well, it doesn't have the good mud version of the chained. I'm sure it's got, like, the all-terrain version, which... They're not terrible, but I'd certainly rather the mud version if I could. Uh, oh, yeah. Basically, instead of using the very rear winch point on the trailer, I used one on the side of the trailer, but it was pretty bloody close to the back. And then it offered me the winch point on the front of the Dolphin, so for this little bit I was able to do, I mean, near enough one of the biggest road trains you can do in the game, because, yeah, it's double eight slot trailers. So, I was pretty happy with myself now, at least I managed to get a little bit of it, and again it was quite handy, because I'm only driving down this road, so it just saves going back to the Dolphin and driving the exact same route twice. Definitely pretty long. <laughs> That's what she said, of course. So at the minute, by the way, um, yeah, I need one of the medium pipes to build a large pipe. So I've got to deliver one. So basically, what I did is from the block alpha mission, I had a P16 there just around the corner. So I just drove that next to me, uh, unpacked the trailer. Got the dolphin with the crane, that's part of the reason why I brought the dolphin, because it had the crane. Uh, yeah, crane that over to this P16. Now I'm going to run this P16 down to... I don't know what it's called. It was a mission called Plant Restoration, I believe. Um, yeah, and once you're there, you can build... It might let you build metal beams, which is weird, because again, we've got them anyway. 
Um, a large pipe though mainly. And the only other option, I could have gone to Cosmodrome. And I think it's, uh, is it at the farm or something? I think you can grab large pipes from there. I'm sure there was some of the mission act to, to deliver large pipes. Um, yeah, when Dan, when that kept flipping all the time and getting stuck. Uh, yeah, but basically I just thought, since I actually did the plant restoration mission and that's in theory, I suppose, what the game is kind of in, uh, intending for us to do. And for that you need uh, medium pipes and two metal rollers. Which again, I didn't realise at the time, or I, I did because I looked, but I kind of forgot and just didn't think about it or whatever. Um, I forgot like that I need also two metal rolls, I'll sort of explain more about that in a little bit. I was genuinely turning for quite a while there, I believe because icy road no chained but I was turning for a lot longer than it appears in that so yeah get here our new trailer discovered what's that a fuel trailer um yeah so medium pipes and then two metal rolls just got that done for now I just wanted to get that little bit out of the way because uh yeah I need a large pipe coming up <laughs> definitely what she said so uh that's like a little bit towards it later. Also, I've not put the footage in this, but uh, I need wooden planks. I drove a Paystar, like the newer one that we got off Phase 3. Um, and just took some long logs to the sawmill and made some more wood. Um, yeah, so this is when you're coming into the factory. Now we've got to go down here and deliver it over here. I'll be honest. I don't know why they just decided to cover all the roadways in crap everywhere. Especially when they're doing, asking us to deliver like 24 cargo slots of stuff. They kind of probably knew that the 8 slot would be a high possibility and even if it wasn't, like a ramped flatbed ain't exactly gonna zigzag through here. Issue 3. And the 8 slot, yeah, I mean, I don't know, the 8 slot's handy on this mission, because like I said, there's 24 lots of cargo, so if you can get kind of 8 done per trailer, that's 3 trucks you've got to use instead of 4, 5, whatever. But yeah, getting around in this uh, plant place is a bit of a pain in the ass. So, trying to winch to that post just to kind of drag my trailer uh, to the left as we're looking. Not easy, does it? It's going pretty well. Oh. Feelism, the realism. And then everything's gone pretty badly. Apart from the loaf, of course, because he's a goddamn professional. He landed on his wheels. But nothing else did. So, quit the game, reloaded. <laughs> Try again. Uh, by the way, I can't remember who it was, but thanks to whoever it was. Uh, you seen a minute ago when I. Uh, was just driving in here. If you go to remove cargo, I could actually remove that cabin next to me for some random reason. Then I just kind of didn't want to because it was like, well, I don't want to delete it now. <laughs> I want to keep it. Basically, all those boxes are doing my tits in and they're getting in my way. I just change to the dolphin, change back to the club, and then all the boxes are gone. Magic. However, what the game gives, it also takes away. Now the loaf has fallen off the truck, even though I didn't move when I switched to the dolphin and back to the club. And uh, yeah. He looks got done professional, so he's not having that. I've came this far. I'm finishing my journey on my collab. He's made it. Got dumb horse. And then just for the game's troubles, super horn blows everything up. That's right, fence. No offense, but go fuck yourself. That's what's trolling me for the last five minutes in this stupid yard. I'll see if I could launch anything else. Slash, now I've hit the horn and made all those boxes around me move. If I switch back to the dolphin and back to this, all those boxes would be gone. Yeah, 
And again, at this point, it's where it's like, can you not just add officially in the game, not mods, a snowplow type thing? I would have been perfectly happy if they added a snowplow, and part of the reason they added it was because we had to drive in here first and kind of smash all the boxes and crap out of the way. But a lot of the stuff is locked in place, if you know what I mean, where it's like, it doesn't matter how hard you hit it, it's not moving. So the boxes can move, but they catch you pretty badly and kind of lock all your wheels up and all the rest of it. Um, yeah, that one cabin thing moved. But like I said, there's all sorts of piles of scrap metal and pipes and all sorts all over the place that... Between you and a massive long 8-slot trailer, trying to get through there is a uh, bit of a pain in the ass. So he dropped all this stuff off and then I was obviously looking now, like, well, there's no way I'm getting another truck in and down here if I just sit that and leave that truck there. So I didn't fancy trying to reverse the bloody thing back out. Long story short, I don't think this trailer's ever going to leave this factory. Like I'm just trying to get it out of the way now. I could delete it, but again, out of stubbornness, it's like, no game. <laughs> You're not making me waste my money. Uh, just a quick trick again, like, switch the dolphin back to this, got rid of all the boxes. Because these cabins are in the way this time, I used the remove cargo thing. There you go, I deleted one cabin. Just because, yeah, the wet angle it was, it was like locking my trailer in place. All these slabs on the floor, by the way, um, you can lift them up with a crane. They're those sorts of slabs. Just I cut it out because I was like faffing around for a minute there. But when I originally checked, like, remove cargo, there's an X on every one of these little individual slabs. So well, one day, in sort of a future self-invented mission or whatever, I'll, uh, I might come down here, grab a few of them, load them on a trailer and maybe try and fix some potholes, but I remember, was it Rebel by Choice, the other day or week or whatever, was uh, testing out a few things to kind of patch up some potholes. This might be an option. You could even get them and uh, take them to, yeah, Cosmodrome, Northern Aegis, um, Erska River. Like, you can travel through all the gateways on it, so you can get it out of uh, on any of the four maps. I don't know if there's any other places like that on the other maps where there's just a big sheet of like those slabs. Um, anyway, so yeah, eventually, as you can see, I kind of smashed my collob through everything, got the tr just to get the trailer out of the way, pretty much. So now it's a turn of the dolphin to get through here, which at least the good news is I've kind of smashed all the fences and all that crap out of the way. And because I've switched vehicles, all the mess has kind of disappeared. But yeah, stuff like this. And I can't even, like you know, use my crane and crane these things out of the way. They are just all in the way and it's like such a odd decision again <laughs> for the devs to make like most people I would have thought would just be like, yeah, make make the yard make sense for the kind of vehicles and trailers that we're gonna supply. So I stuck a winch on the trailer into that pose, tried to kind of lever the trailer sideways just because it was hooked on those immovable pipes kind of on the inside of the corner. Got round there. Again, the club's already smashed all through this bit, so it was pretty smooth sailing through there. Drop all of that off. But same sort of issue as before, basically. Like, um... Yeah, if I just leave this here, I can't get any other vehicle down here. Uh, reversing that trailer out will be nigh on impossible. So I'm just going to have to drive this over here as well. And again, this will be another trailer that <laughs> just gets left to gather dust. Another free range trailer. Now I'm hooked on this trailer. It's like, oh, game. Now, around this point, I was determined, like, no, I'll run my way past this trailer and I'll get level with the collob. I was getting hooked on stuff, got hooked on something else, <laughs> kept flooring it for a bit. It was like, you know what? Sod it. I'm done. I'm out. Some manager will come running out, like, excuse me, mate, can you? I'm, I'm out. I'm fucking yabba dabba do. Flying down a brontosaurus and I'm off. Like, well, you what, mate? You're breaking up. Even though he's not on a mobile or anything. Stood next to me, but still. 
my ears aren't tuned to non-paying frequencies. I'm out of there. Um, yeah, for the next journey, uh, from my garage, I didn't really go over it too well, but to the yard in the top corner, grab concrete slabs, uh, etc. I'll kind of explain it as we go. Um, yeah, got the Zix for this one. Got a god, got a goddamn horse. And uh, I originally was going to take the eight-slot trailer. I then had a bit of another plan, because the reason I didn't really want to bring the 8-slot again is because it was a pain in the ass. Uh, I've got a few yards and stuff I need to go in and out of, so it'd be a pain in the ass in that sense. And then, basically, where I just drove uh, that P16 to, in that yard, uh, there was a ramped flatbed I left from when I did the plant restoration mission. So I was just thinking I could put like the large pipe, which is a 4-slot cargo by the way, not 2, like the medium and so on. Um, yeah, put it on its own separate ramped flatbed, so essentially I'll have two ramped flatbeds, but, I don't know, they bend and go round corners a bit better than the uh, the bloody 8-slot thing. And uh, I was tempted to cut this out, but in the Block Alpha mission I did, um, this was like the one journey I kind of did cut out of that. Uh, when I went with Bruce, kind of to the top corner, grabbed six lots of metal rolls, took it all the way down to the factory where I just built the medium pipes. See, like there, for example, the Zix was just going really slow, and it was like, why? I was started mashing the L1 button, trying to put it in high and back to auto and all sorts, but it just feels like a lot of hard work trying to get this thing to go fast, relatively speaking. Not fast, fast, but I just mean, you know, like, get through your gears and put some bloody power down it's always like again almost like clutch slipping kind of like that's how I'd imagine it as in you can kind of hear the revs are there but there's just not a lot going on and it's like the thing's just not applying the power to the ground Especially when you hear is the main reason I bring a goddamn horse with me especially if I'm going on this bridge when I um did the little pay star like I brought the pay star down here to grab some long logs and get all that sorted yeah the pay star got absolutely deleted getting the first wheels up it does and it's when it hits those back wheels it just yeah exploded my pay star suspension gone fuel tank gone tires gone but I had a horse for me so then when I got over the other side yeah I just fixed everything and we're good to go so if you ever are crossing here even if you don't normally bring a loaf I would because it's got 300 repair points and tyres and fuel, <laughs> and you might need it. Come on! Come on, little one, come on! Come on, then! Come on, then! Very good! Push! Push! Very oh, good! God. Push! Come on! Oh, come on! <laughs> come on, then! There you are! <laughs> and we're out. To be fair, the um, Zix is pretty good at not taking suspension damage there, but I was kind of feathering the throttle and going a little bit slow when those rear axles were kind of bumping up because, like I said, yeah, I did it earlier with the Paystar and absolutely uh, deleted the thing. But because the loafers have got them professional, I did. Well, it must have been 287 damage. <laughs> so I think I had 13 repair points left on the loaf and a couple of tyres spare and the fuel and yeah I'm going to veer off to the left now and follow this little road because I'm just going to the main road but when I came down here in the pay start I obviously just went back up that snow bank uh, to that sort of logging station there and then I basically cut along down the ice uh, and just straight to the, the sawmill Another free range trailer. I could use it to be honest, but yeah, the Zix has got carries quite a lot of fuel and it's got a roof rack and it's got a goddamn horse, so I kind of, uh, yeah, I'd rather if I've got the fuel in like a loaf on my roof and all the rest of it, I'd rather use that because I tend to recover them when the mission's done and all the rest of it, whereas that trailer's just kind of going to live there for as long as needs be until I've emptied it really. Well, even then, <laughs> doubt that I'll ever actually put the effort in and drag it back to uh, the garage.
And then going along at this point, this is one of the roadblocks I sort of unblocked the other week. I could veer off to the right now and follow that track where you can see that watery section, go up the hill to the other side and down um, this. I mean, now it's unblocked, it's not terrible, but I don't know, I wouldn't say it's a more efficient route particularly, either way. And at least I was able, I kind of dropped it into high gear early, so it was already definitely fully wound up in the revs and all the rest of it. Uh, I believe it's able to plough in a high range all the way up here, which was pretty nice. If I remember correctly though, it wasn't so smooth the first time when I came through it, it just kept struggling. Like, I think it was kind of forcing me to stay in a uh, first gear and all the rest of it, and it was very slow, which, if I didn't already have my momentum going and I was in high, if I did drop it down into auto and, say, stop at the base of the hill and then started driving, I believe it would have, um, yeah, like, made me stay in first gear and all the rest of it. Now, by the way, even though I've moved it over to high-low, I haven't actually let go of the L1 button, so I'm still in high gear. I was getting ready, like, sort of had it primed, ready to go, so the second I hear the revs die, uh, I can let go of L1 and it's already in high-low, just before it does the stalling thing and then I lose my momentum. But yeah, it never actually stopped. It stayed wheel-spinning high and was still slowly clawing through the terrain, um, which was pretty good, to be fair. The Zix was doing pretty well in that little section, because even again now, I did exactly the same thing, had it in high-low, but I didn't let go of L1, and I didn't need to in the end it. Normally, the Zix will stall over wheel-spin, but in those cases, it was a uh, wheel-spin, and yeah, that was just enough to claw it forward that I didn't have to drop it out of high. And then, yeah, this is the warehouse in the top corner where I've got to grab uh, a concrete slab and uh, some metal rolls as well. And this now, it's like pro gamer move <laughs> from before. Basically, it was a mission dream car. There's a little, yeah, that. Last time when I came through here with a Bruce, I tried to tow that thing and I towed it just down the yard, smashed it into a lamppost that it got hooked on, and then I drove off. <laughs> but it would have kind of partly been blocking the entrance. Imagine that in real life. Someone's like, yeah, can you tow my car? Like, of course I can, mate. You drive it 50, <laughs> 15 foot in the yard, smash it into the telegraph pole, cut it loose and drive off. Like, goddamn. Send you the invoice. Um, yeah, basically, as you can see, I put one concrete slab on this trailer, and then on the other trailer, I put two metal rolls. And the reason I did it that way is because I've also got to go to the sawmill and grab two, uh, two wooden planks. And to be honest, at this point, moment in time when I was getting the footage I forgot that I also needed two metal pi uh, metal rolls sorry, to build the large pipe so I thought in my head, like for the next mission on this little list called Block Gamma or whatever it was uh, I also need to build a metal, uh, sorry a medium pipe so I wanted to try and get the metal rolls over to that kind of end of the map. Otherwise, on the next mission, I've got to drive all the way to this uh, warehouse again, and then all the way back to like this big plant I'm restoring. Or in fact, past that, then all the way to where I went with the Zix. Uh, sorry, the Kolob. <laughs> Not explaining this very well. Um, where, I, where I've got to build the medium pipes. So I was bringing the uh, metal rolls, thinking, oh, this is just like... A little extra thing for kind of the next mission to make that a little bit easier but then yeah it was only when I kind of got further down the mission that I realized so basically what I should have done is just put four metal rolls on the trailer and now again of course feel isn't that realism the trailer goes mental for no apparent reason makes my metal rolls go flying off so I did the quit and reload method because I haven't got a crane with me, and I can't be asked driving a crane all the way from the garage to make up for the game's crappy mistakes. See, that hill I've definitely wheel spin on, well, I near enough am now, but got a couple of wheels over in the snow banks, it's just enough. Pretty majestic looking loaf, if I do say so myself. I 
yeah I really wish I'd put four metal rolls on that trailer because it's a bit of a pain in the arse I'm going to have to drive all the way back again well to be fair actually I, if I send a vehicle from like this plant section that I'm already doing anyway I suppose it's not that far but it could be better I could have just brought them with me now a bit of daylight on the go, it really doesn't last long I wish it would just be like 10 minutes of uninterrupted prime daylight hours thankfully there's a little glitch there, <laughs> even the game along here for whatever reason it's kind of getting on for death snow where you just go incredibly slow even though there are only like a few inches of snow by the looks of it I believe there as well, it was holding me in first gear would not let me change gear even if I even if the truck was theoretically uh, like capable and then eventually when I was out of that section that's what I mean, I think just the terrain itself is also being coded to like restrict your vehicle so it almost like blanket restricts whatever vehicle you enter on that terrain it's kind of they're all going to be behave the same because they're all going to be like nerfed via the terrain rather than like the truck balance in itself so I mean this is the upside and downside of an 8 slot versus a ramp flatbed certainly driving in here uh, pack two wooden planks on the 8 slot now I mean I'd have to reverse it do some kind of like hope it can go flying left or right into the forest or there's tree stumps all around but of course trying to reverse a bloody ramped flatbed is an exercise in misery. So I've got it around to back now, trying to be all careful with it. Trying to be gentle. <laughs> Should I give it a little a little nudge each time so it tries to just do a little jump back, but not enough to where it can just try and suddenly spring itself over and tip the cargo off. Even tried to help there and drive forward back again a little bit. Oh my god. So, quick reload, try again. Oh my god, game. Quick reload, try again. And this time I was like, right, you stupid trailer, I'll put a safety rope on you. Now you're not going to tip. And then it started leaning that way. But for Christ's sake, fine. <laughs> I'll stick a winch on this side. And there. Getting all cocky now, like, yeah, is that right, trailer? Some of them apples, bitch. And then, oh, god damn it. Quick reload, try again. Uh, I edited most of it out. Eventually got around, went wider as I got out the yard. Hit another bloody tree stump, got stuck on that for a while. Hence the edit. <laughs> and then we're off. Got some wood. That's why I left that trailer, I disconnected it there, because instead of imagine double reversing them things, bloody hell, impossible in this game. Um, yeah, so I just sort of disconnected it at the crossroad so I could grab it on my way past. And just to throw it out there as well, if you forgetting planning for the next mission with two more metal rolls but obviously I already had metal rolls at the medium pipe factory place if you didn't have that then you could do this part of this, this stage of the mission first but as I brought two metal rolls bring four and then yeah two of them will be to build your large pipes and then you'd, you've got two of them a bit closer to where like you'd have to backtrack a little bit but um, yeah like, you can take the two other metal rolls down to the medium pipe factory. Like I said, I already got that done from Block Alpha. Which again, if you're on Block Alpha, take 
six metal rolls. Or eight if you can technically. I mean, I'd, yeah. Eight means you have to take an eight slot all the way to that warehouse I've just been to, etc. But take at least six and that'll get you done for a good chunk of the missions anyway. See now, I'm tapping L1, you can see like the gearbox thing flashing. It just won't let me change up a gear. Even though I'm basically like at the top revs of the first gear, like could easily change. And it never used to do that, it's pretty much if you just started mashing L1, it'd basically jump up the gears until it can't physically jump up any more gears, like there's not enough revs to be able to. So at this point, to be honest, I don't really know what I was thinking for this 10 seconds because uh, I cut the metal rolls trailer loose now. Started going to drive in here and then I stop about now because I was like, oh yeah. Like, I don't need to take these slabs and everything in there. Um, basically, I already had the P16 in there that you seen from earlier. I just reversed that out, grabbed the trailer with the metal rolls, cashed them in. And just again a little tip because the trailer's such a wanker. Um, I dropped the metal rolls off. Now I'm going to turn the trailer around because then it can tip all it bloody likes. Just instead of, you know, building and packing the uh, large pipes, now trying to turn the trailer around and then it'll do that. Flick your large pipe off and then, yeah. Now you'll have to bring a crane or do the quit and reload method. By now, I don't think he'll tip. I think that's got it around enough. Uh, yeah, get that loaded. And drive out here. Originally, I did drive a little bit further down the road, but I'm going to edit it now. I'll show you why in a sec. So then I switched to this vehicle. Uh, just went to reverse it a little bit. And, yep. God damn it, game. This game like shouldn't be so difficult to enjoy so uh, yeah quit and reloaded <laughs> I was gonna say it saves me time but in the scheme of things as well probably wasted like an hour tonight just purely quitting and reloading but that's probably saved me two to three hours of driving cranes and all sorts around the bloody map uh, yeah long story short don't reverse it just do a big fat loop through the snow. Turn my phone charging is driving me mad. It's barely like been able to get over four percent all night. It keeps going like one percent, then three percent, then it goes back to two or one, then it's like it's not good. Um yeah, wait let me do my bloody road train again. So, out of curiosity, I thought, right, I'll switch to the P16. I'll see if that old beauty can do a, a road train. I mean, it could just be luck. Credit where it's due. The P16, that managed it. So, I was able to, yeah, do a road train, which, again, is nice. Because I'm heading the same way with both vehicles. So, it saves me just doing the same drive twice. Yeah, I think the problem with my phone is, like... Well, one, the battery's screwed, partly because the charger, basically, it's quite an old phone anyway, but eventually after plugging the charger in and out loads, it gets a bit worn and all the rest of it, so it was quite loose, and on my last charger, when I originally mentioned it a month or two ago in my videos, um, to try and keep the charger just in to where it wasn't blinking on and off and saying accessory not accepted or recognise, whatever the hell it says, or, you know, phone under 20% or 10% and all that, I was like wedging a bit of tissue because I've got a big fat case thing around my phone so there's like some, I don't know, more metal and everything around the bottom of the phone so when I plug the charger in I could kind of wedge a bit of tissue in between the charger cable and like the phone case bit and it kept the uh, cable more 
just wedged into the phone so that then I could reply to comments and stuff without it blinking up ten times a second saying accessory not supported and all that crap. But what I think I did was kind of like stretch the hole, <laughs> I'm not even going to say it, but like the hole that receives the charger in the phone, I think I've now like sort of slightly widened it and loosened it and just kind of, yeah. So now the charger cable is sitting really loose. And that's why it keeps jiggling around and then it's like keeps slipping out and all the rest of it. And because it keeps slipping out, I keep jamming it back in <laughs> again. I'm, uh, I'm not going to say it. Um, and because of that, I'm like, when you've got a brand new fresh charger, it fits quite snugly because it's like fresh metal and it's sort of like the metal on metal friction is enough that it just sort of grips it in there. But because it is slipping out so often, I'm kind of wearing the charger down in like a month instead of a year so now it's only a tiny bit of wear on the metal but now it's really loose when I plug it in so now it's falling out even more and then because it keeps blinking on and off all the time that's obviously not good for the battery health and all the rest of it so now I think the battery is near enough cooked and yeah I've had the phone like I'm not really one I don't go on social media and all that so I'm not like oh I need my phone in that sense but I don't know I like to mentally fidget. I'm always like reading something, listening to some video documentary thing or something like so. Phone's not been working all night. Tried plugging it in and just leaving it alone but yeah, it's not not made it over 10% battery so far. I might have to just bite the bullet and get a new battery for it. Um, yeah, got here though. Yeah, it's a good old barrel. Um, the nice thing was the P16 did pretty well at smashing its way through that. I think there was a few less things to bump out of the way, but it still did pretty well. Those things were back, by the way, because when I do a quit and reload, it kind of reloads all those boxes and everything. Uh, yeah, next one, though. Sending the uh, Zix, which, to be fair, had a pretty easy time of it. You see, at least if it was just cleared like that in the yard, it'd be a pretty easy drive. But all those boxes and crap everywhere really doesn't uh, help an already awkward situation. However, we got in there, we got it built, we dropped everything off, get some little animation of more of the factory being built. So that's two out of three down. Uh, is it 24 grand for the mission, which is a bit of a rip-off really, considering everything I've done should have been 40, 50 grand. They were paying out nearer that on like the paper mill contract on the Wisconsin maps. But anyway though, it's done. So yeah, another one in the bag. That's about it for today. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my Patreon members. Get yourself a loaf because he's a beast and I'll be back soon.